Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick. This is the wonderful outdoors. I have with me Mr. 30, my Game of Inches champion partner. We yeah, took baby. her all down almost a year ago from today. It's about a month later is when we actually competed. And I like to say we are on a mission right now for the Game of Inches again, but it's not, it's not even a pre-fish. There's no really talks of anything happening for this year. But we are up at Rocky Lake Resort in Northern Manitoba. And the last time I was here, I chased smallmouth bass, but today, lake trout. Lake trout time. Big lake trout. Obviously not on Rocky Lake, but Clearwater Lake is just across the road, like a quick 20 minute snowmobile trip with uh, a groom trail almost all the way there. So we are going to jump on the lake and get after some lakers. See if we can get this guy a giant laker. He has caught a big laker before. He caught one last winter up at Baker's Narrows. Uh, I'll insert the picture here, but now we're gonna we're gonna go get him some more. He's getting all of the tip ups to start with. This time. The a real Laker, yeah, because a 40 <laughs> incher is not big enough apparently. Just spoiled. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it, man. It's a little after 10 o'clock. We are fully set up right now. We popped up the otter. It, it's windy, like, especially when we first got here. So we got the otter popped up, got a hole drilled in there, got a camera drilled there to or a hole with awesome visibility. Adam's gonna fish in the shack. And like I said, we're gonna run three deadlines to go with it. And I actually have two cameras right now on the deadline. So we got one deadline without a camera at all and then two deadlines right now with cameras. So, and like I said in the intro too, Adam's taking all the flags. He's gonna fish, and we're both gonna hang out in the shelter, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna man all of the deadlines. I'm gonna go around, make sure they don't get frozen, check out the cameras, etc. And if a deadline goes, we're gonna bring Adam out. He's gonna hopefully pop a big one. Obviously, ideally we'd catch a big one in the shack. I've been told though that Clearwater fish aren't as aggressive and they eat a lot of stuff off of the bottom more than anything. They're a pretty lazy fish. So we'll see what uh, we can get done. But I'm gonna go in the shack right now and hang out with my man for a little bit so he doesn't get bored. But it's, we got awesome visibility. Like I'm so pumped with the visibility. Those Cisco's are just, just like shining right up down there. Uh, so good on the underwater camera. In fact, one of them I could even get a, uh, the next day, tomorrow, I'll pull even a little bit further away, I think, for the underwater camera. One's perfect, one's a little bit too close in my mind, but yeah, things are good. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we smash a big one. Two o'clock, still no fish landed anywhere. Nothing in the tent, no tip-ups. We don't even know if there's been fish swimming around outside in the tip-ups just because we got the cameras out there. So if there is any cool footage, of so far of the fish swimming around. I'll play that now. But it is time for chili, courtesy of Amanda again, right? Anybody that watched the Game of Inches, she cooked us up some chili for number that, and we got another batch of it, right? Number oh, one sponsor. Oh, oh. Number one sponsor. This is gonna be good. Adam fishes, I cook. <laughs> this is gonna be better than stag chili, that's for sure. I told Adam, no pressure, we need at least one smaller lake trout for a trout chowder one evening he's, like, he's like yeah no problem man i'll catch i'm I'll, no problem first five minutes oh what is that that's bigger what should i do here go in the bottom go in the bottom yeah that's big fish that's a nice fish look at the difference i saw i looked i saw the the mark oh in here go, go up high first now go up high now so you can draw them yeah i saw the mark on the graph and looked and i'm like ooh. That was, that's like a mid, that was like a mid thirties. Like he was deep. This is okay. Well, that just, that just changes 
everything. We just saw a nice fish on the underwater camera. It gives you so much hope, so much more drive to just keep going. Right now it's 323. The chili was amazing. And now it's just like, we're just hoping for that, the big fish to come by. Adam's been messing around with, I'm pretty sure it's the same fish over and over and over and over. And that goes to show you a lot of times if you're not using underwater camera, which obviously you can't on some lakes, it's too dark. But here, if you'd have been marking that fish on your graph, you would have thought maybe you have a new fish coming in and out and you're like, why can't I get these fish to bite? But yet it's that same fish that won't bite. Underwater cameras are so cool just to learn that type of stuff. But that was a better fish. I've got hope. I've got good hope now. Um, we definitely have a flag, buddy. Really? Yep. I'm gonna reset it right where it is because it's still in the shot. Yeah. Yeah, you see if you can I'll save back. it. Save clip. Record. And yeah, I'll just reset it and uh, hopefully it comes back. Well, unfortunately, he picked it up and just dropped it. So you can see our sun is starting to set. We have we have a little bit longer here yet, but not too much because as soon as we lose visibility on these cameras, we're going to pick up stuff anyway. And we do have a sled ride back. It's about a half an hour, 35 minutes. I think I said this morning about 20 minutes. It was it's a 35 minute sled ride, but it was smooth the whole way. It was it was quite enjoyable to be honest. So, anyways, we're still going to keep this in here. Hopefully, it picks it up. There's definitely some good fish cruising around. We're going to leave our our camp. Or we're gonna come back this this way anyway. We might leave our camp set up a little bit here, or just our shelter, and take everything else with with us, and then come back to this spot tomorrow morning again. And hopefully we can hopefully we can score. So far, this video is off to a slow start, but that's lake trout fishing, as I said before. The highs are high, the lows are low. But I was planning to kind of vlog this whole trip, not just one of the good days. We're gonna show all all three days in a, a video here and see what we can get done. Well, our sun is completely gone. We uh, fished right till sunset here. We just pulled all of our deadlines. We're now gonna make our way back to the cabin. I'm not sure what's for supper. We'll, uh, we'll go figure that out at the cabin. I'll do a little bit of tour of the cabin as well. Well, good morning. Day two of the adventure. I didn't film anything we got back last night. Just uh, cold, it was a cold sled ride home. And this morning it's gonna be a cold sled ride out too. It's uh, minus. 30 right now before any wind thankfully there isn't very much wind at all so at least today once we get out there the sun's probably going to feel really good sleds are warming next time you see us uh or see well my us because adam's with me he's obviously not with me for this shot but he's still with me he hasn't packed up and gone gone home yet he hasn't given up frosty next time you see us we'll be fishing Well, 11 46 and we officially have our three deadlines set up fishing in the shack again there's actually a fish literally coming right as i'm i'm speaking right now uh adam's had some more aggressive fishing here which i've probably played some clips of and stuff as i've been out setting up a bunch of deadlines i made a huge mistake today i didn't bring my all my batteries for my camera so i'm going on one head cam gopro battery I'm trying to get better light here i'm going on one head camera battery and i don't have my main camera i've got this camera i've got two battery batteries for audio so there won't be a pile of updates and all that from today and because i'm saving the all of the battery 
f battery power for if we happen to catch fish. I can run all the underwater cameras though, thankfully. So that is a good thing. And then I do have the capability to like charge this as I go. So I can, I'm not even gonna turn it on ahead of time. I do have one GoPro hooked up to external battery, thankfully. So we can capture some hook sets and stuff in the shack if it happens, but you won't see the main camera today at all. It'll be this little puppy right here, which is a Canon G7X Mark II. It does its job for sure. Try to catch one or two like this. Hopefully, did he pick it up? I think he's got it. He's got it. Is he? Yeah, he's got it. No, he's, yeah. Yep, that's what it took. That's what it took. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. This fish has bugged you for two days and it took laying a piece of meat on the bottom with the treble hook and that's it for our first laker that fish is chowder well finally we nailed the laker but it, it took the most boring way to catch it a little treble hook and some meat on the bottom, but we got one. They're definitely docile. This one is coming home for us, with us, because we're gonna do a trout chowder in the cabin. Oh, I'm hooked up, I didn't even hit bottom. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Again, yeah. just like that. Nailing. Okay. Just a cute one. Yeah, that's a good one for you, but that's fish too. Boring way to fish. And I kind of knew we'd catch them like that. We've just been holding off though for sure. Savages, hey? They're savages. Okay. Oh, yeah, that one's on. Already? Yeah. <laughs> Three fish in no time with just a little tiny piece of meat. Get your fix in yet? <laughs> Getting there. <laughs> Can't turn them. Huge. Yeah, you can get them back. Okay. Fish three, going back. See ya. So just like that, three fish on the board. And I kind of knew all along, it's like if we just literally laid a piece of meat on the bottom with a treble hook, that we would catch some of these smaller fish because they're coming in here and they're cleaning up the chum like crazy. But... And you lay, even you lay a spoon on the bottom, as soon as they suck it up a little bit, they feel uh, the weight of the spoon, they just spit it out instantly or they don't even eat it. So you can downsize to a tiny, tiny little treble. Here, show me your, your hook, literally. Like, look how, look how horrible this looks right here. That's all it is, it's just a treble hook with some meat on the bottom, no weight, no nothing. And because we're watching them on the camera, as soon as they pick it up, we're hitting them right away so they're not choking it back and it's going to be in their gullet or anything like that. It's not the most exciting, exhilarating way of fishing at all. I don't have confidence for a bigger fish like this, but we did want to put a couple fish in the shack and get one to take home for fish chowder tonight too. So objective of achieving that. Adam's going to probably catch a couple like this or a couple more, likely switch back to a tube jig to have a confidence bait down there for a bigger fish when it comes by. Because we are, we are trophy hunting, but this is obviously something you can do to just catch a couple fish in the meantime. The worst part would be if a big fish came by right now and you have this little little piece of meat down there and you wanted to have your tube jig because you get kind of handcuffed where you can't reel up quick enough and drop your tube jig and that fish is gonna cruise right by. Bottom, eh? He's already got fish coming off the bottom to it.
Uh, we have a flag. What? We actually have a flag. It's the one over there too. Bump board. Yeah, it's spooled. It's spooled. It's spooled. Just don't set it. Just reel. Just reel. Just reel. Just reel. It could, it could come right back at us. Just reel. It's probably, it probably spooled itself and turned around and got, it would have been hooked when it, what's that? Is it there? Yeah, okay, loosen your drag a bit. Still there? Okay. I'll come, I'll come loosen stuff. Yeah, perfect, perfect. This is good, I just wanna get that camera out first. I'm gonna do this, just to make sure I'm recording. Amazing, amazing. Amazing, you got lots of, you just fight it. You can give her pretty good. Oh, we've been waiting for this. We've been waiting for this, Adam. And it's on one with the, with the. Oh, so good, so good. I would love to put a camera just on him, but you see I'm running around getting everything ready and dialed. Got a camera here. Okay. It is a mile away still. It is. It's definitely a mile away. Okay. I'm gonna save this battery. I'm just filming with the head camera now. Just doing good, buddy. <laughs> We're not even at the blue line yet. No. Like it's, yeah, it's a mile away for sure. But I've got the, I've got the um, flag or the underwater camera pulled, so we can't get caught anything there. So you can give it to them. Whenever it's your turn, you give it to them. Yeah, amazing, dude. We've been waiting for this, hey? Like it just felt like it was never gonna happen. And here it is, like what, 3.30ish of our second day? Still there? Yeah, it's still there, right? I didn't like that. So far away though. Yeah, no, just, just give her hard then. Yeah, like, I just didn't like that head shake. I'm gonna grab my hockey stick early. Just, yeah, just wait. Could be caught on the knot of the the two lines. Keep some pressure. Keep pressure. Keep pressure. Pressure. I need. I need more pressure. Still on it. I need. I need you to go pressure again. Pull towards you. Yeah. Then you be able to slide it. There we go. Oh. It's still there. No. Nope. So then it was gone before then already then. Just treat it like it is just in case, because it could you could be collecting slack. I think he might have just been he might have he might have got stuck in it. Just keep keep going just in case. Oh yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was just he was yeah. just he was just correct collecting. It was just because he when it got tight, yeah. he came back the other way. Yeah, I had a few, I, I've, man, they're so fast, right? Like. It's so hard to tell when the lines were. A hundred percent. But now we're, we're at the blue line now. Man, that thing, like we, I saw the, actually like witness the flag pop and we just got here and it was peeling, 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 peeling. I got pliers here. I've got again, this, if it gets caught again in the, but it see, it ran out so far and it was probably high up that it just dug into that uh, that ice, right? This hockey stick right here with the notch, you can slide down. This is, everybody that Lake Trout fishes like this with deadlines, you should carry something like this, especially if you guide. Yeah. Keep doing your thing, buddy. You will, you will not break this fish off, so you can you can horse it. When it's your turn, you give it to it. And when if he pulls, then you let him go. And you know how, to, you know. Oh, 
I want it to come back this way so it doesn't get, yeah. so no knot. I think we're good though. Once in a while you can feel it digging into the ice, but I think we're good. This is on the Frostbite Slugger. So it's a really heavy duty rod, 3000 size Stratic. We've got 30 pound Suffix 832 ice braid, and then a 20 pound Suffix Advanced Floral Carbon Leader. Just big head shakes, eh? And on this leader where it, tie, tie, it connects to the line, I do an FG knot with about 20 feet of line. And the FG knot slides through these guides of this rod, so nice. There's our knots. We got about 20 feet left yet. Yeah. And what we'll do if we're lucky enough to land this fish, I'll grab it, I'll pull it up, I'll measure it, and I'll put it back in the hole, and then we'll let Adam pull it up. Very close. Yeah. Yeah. Take your time. Take your time. It's going to hook sideways a bit. I saw it for a second. I'm not going to, I'm just going to lead the line a bit. Just keep steady pressure. I'm just leading. Yeah. Just leading, I never touch, I'm never pulling, I'm just leading. I'm trying to keep it away from the edge of the ice because those hooks get caught on the edge of that ice. You can pull up though, you can pull a little bit, pull, yeah. Pull, just wait a little bit, wait, just wait, just wait, lots of bubbles. Oh boy, that's a nice one buddy, that's a gooder. Oh yeah, nice, nice. We'll, we'll show it off first, we'll measure it after. Okay, buddy, pull her up. We've been waiting. We've been waiting. Yeah! <laughs> nice. Good fish, dude. Clear water lake trout right there. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Let's get a quick bump board here. Check her out. It's gonna be a master angler for sure. We're fishing outside. We wanna be quick with it here. Oh, easy, easy girl. Easy girl. Okay, push it up. Okay, what's we got there? 30, 38, 38. Okay, perfect. Let's just get it back down. Covering his eyes right now because it's colder. Yep. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Dude, and she's gone. No, that was amazing. It was amazing. We just got 38 inch her, dude. And it, the best part about it, underwater camera. It's going to be eating. Behind. It's so good. The one flag we needed to go was this one and it did. That's a good fish for you. Oh. Nope. Get the meat. Oh, he ate it. Yep. Bam. Got him. Dude. 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 That's amazing. I'll get your transducers at 24 feet. Coming up. Caught one on the tube jig. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a great that's a great one for Adam. <laughs> Love it. Finally an active one on the tube jig though, hey? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Small compared to the 38 incher, eh? Not even a luncher, even too small for lunch. Active. Yeah, finally an active one though. Nice. See ya. Well, we are back in the cabin doing one of my favorite things, dumping footage and starting to go through all the underwater shots. So I'll do a quick little relapse or a play here of the underwater footage that you wouldn't have seen today. Uh, some of the cool moments. And I think I saw another really big fish. So we'll play those clips, meow. Okay, cool. Well, we still got another day of lake trail fishing, possibly two, we're not really sure yet, but we 
we have that looked forward to. We have those fish looked forward to. We're gonna fish the same area. It just seems like things are wrapping up right now. And that's like your fishing. Highs, lows, highs, lows, it happens. But right now, we are about to cook up some trout chowder. One of my favorite little recipes right here. Pretty basic. I got one, just thought of one item I gotta grab out of the fridge here yet, but we'll, we'll start here. So anyways, we got potatoes, onions, bacon, the lake trout, corn, dillweed, all-terrain catch and cook. We might use a little bit of vegetable oil. We'll see how much grease we get from the bacon and then a little bit of a spicy catch and cook. And then the item I said I was gonna grab from the fridge, whipping cream here. I like to fry up my potatoes and my onions first and then salt like saute them and then add them to the chowder. So you can boil your water first. You can also boil your water, put your potatoes in and stuff like that. But I like some sauteed potatoes, onions, but first step is to fry up the bacon and we'll take the bacon out, put it to the side and then we'll saute up our potatoes and onions. And with that, we will be using the seasoning called the all terrain. So I'll show some of this on the video. Some of it, I'm just going to cook, but let's get her done. Bacon going in. Also start to boil some water here as we go because eventually all of this will end up going into this pot. I'm hoping to probably take some water out, but we will we'll boil it up and then basically after we fry our bacon, actually the bacon goes in last, but after we fry our potatoes, saute them up with the onions when they're done, then they go into this boiling water in here and then we add our corn and then the fish as well like that. And then we add our cream after, dill weed, et cetera. But I'll boil this and then hopefully probably dump a little bit of water out here before I put everything in. Eventually I'll do a tour of the cabin here. This is cabin nine, but it is a disaster right now because I've got stuff charging everywhere. For example, like look at all the aqua views right now, just giving her here. And yeah, well, my room's a little bit of a disaster. Adam's over here. This is a nice two bedroom cabin though. It's awesome. Okay. Our bacon's gonna go into this bowl and we're gonna save the grease here for the potatoes and the onions. Okay, and go the potatoes. Now potatoes we're not gonna cook fully right now. We're cooking to them about, uh, I'd say about 80% and then they'll finish cooking when they're boiling in the water here. Throw in some chipotle seasoning, all terrain, catch and cook. Kind of spice up those potatoes a bit. In go with some onions. And this is another one of the rooms right here. Adam's chilling out, watching, watching Toronto get kicked. Leafs lose another one. Everybody feels sorry for Adam. He's a Toronto Maple Leaf fan. And yeah, charging batteries as always. Dakota Lithium's getting a good charge right now. Yeah, nice little area to hang clothes here. And yeah, things are good. Things are good. The fish, it's a little, got a little bit frozen on me here on the ride home, not bad, but I put in my fillets whole and I break them apart as they cook. When they start to flake apart, they will break apart quite nicely. Hopefully my English was good, but if it wasn't, when, the, when that fish, when this trout starts to cook, it'll all break apart quite nice. I'm not adding any extra seasoning right now, just in case I have to dump some of the water out, but I think we're, I think we're good. So I'll bring that back to a boil. The fish will, will cook. And then after the fish is cooked, we'll add everything else. You guys are probably wondering where the spicy catching cook is coming in, but I'll explain that yet. See how it all breaks apart, flakes, flakes apart kind of. That's the ticket right there. Just keep breaking it up. Okay, we'll start to turn this down here because eventually we're going to add our cream in. That's one of the big things is to get the heat a little bit lower, but our fish is pretty much all cooked. It's almost finished breaking apart. Almost grabbed it, but it didn't. It was smart. You notice lots of times my cooking, I never really say like put this amount of water or this amount of this. I just wing everything. It's all about the ingredients. Figure it out as you go. Our fish is definitely cooked. So now what we'll do is we'll add uh, some cream here, whipping cream, and I don't know how much I use. I use enough until it looks about right. Probably use about half of it, maybe three quarter. We'll bring this to a boil. Probably should have drained a little bit of the water out, but uh, might turn into more of a soup than a chowder, but we'll try to thicken it up yet, and that's what the kitchen cook is for. This is gonna thicken everything up a little. After I add my cream, I put in a bunch of dill weed. Ah, oh, that's too slow. Let's do this. There we go, heavy on the dillweed for sure. 
Now we'll use some spicy catching cook here to just thicken it up a little bit here. And plus it'll give it a really good flavor too. And then we put our bacon in and we're gonna stir it up and that'll be it. That's lake trout chowder right there. Yum, yum. Maybe this will make the maple leaf loss a little bit better. Awesome, dude. Bowl one of hopefully about 17. There we have it. Finished product. Took Adam some and now let it cool a little bit and we're gonna enjoy. Well, day number three right now, we're officially set up. We've got three tip up lines going, two with the underwater camera again, underwater camera again, one without, and Adam is inside fishing with an underwater camera, trying to, we're just trying to get him some action, right? So today we're not on a mission for any trout to keep. We might keep one and take it home if we catch it, but obviously the mission is still big fish. We're running big baits. Uh, he'll, Adam will switch up a little bit in the shack, obviously with some active baits and maybe some dead bait on the bottom. And yeah, hopefully that big mama that, uh, that came by yesterday and did eat, I reviewed all the footage and that fish did end up eating it and then swimming off and then it just, it dropped it just a little bit further away. Cause I ended up turning the camera and you can see the, the baits there, the fish dropped it. So hopefully that fish comes back. Cause that was definitely bigger than the 38 incher I think that we caught yesterday. So fingers crossed, we had lots of fish on the underwater cameras yesterday. There's definitely fish in the area. We just need them to open up and start eating. And like I said, day three, here we go. More chunk. Oh, oh, oh. That looks like a bigger mark. Where? That's a bigger fish. Didn't even care. Yeah, he might he might circle. He might circle. Just kind of going this way a bit. That was a bigger fish. Yeah. I can see the mark right away was bigger. Today for lunch, wiener water soup. Yeah, this is just a quick to how to make some wiener water soup. Okay, no. We're actually having smokies in a frying pan. We do have some water in there though. That's not oil, it's actually water. We're just having some slow cooked smokies. Well, lunch was good. We're still waiting for flags to fly. It's been a, a slower day, I'm not gonna lie. We have had a big fish cruise by the shack though. And uh, when I was out checking flags, Adam said he saw it again. And it was definitely a big one. So there's definitely big fish in the area. And we're hoping that that big fish will come around. But speaking of, of big, Clearwater is a giant, giant, giant big lake. And it's like, where do you start? Well, nowadays there's mapping available. I'm myself, I'm using Lowrance Angler's Edge map. Look at this, I got Lowrance right on my, on my uh, machine here. And this mapping is insane. That's zoomed out. And then let's, get, let's zoom in right here. Boom. Look at this. It's so good. One foot contours. It's money. So like a good, a good area to like look for lake trout, say like right here, there's this reef right here. Now the contours are really, really, really tight. And then as the contours kind of spread, get a little bit further apart, that's like a good area to like set up in here, like from that like 55 to 62 feet, somewhere in there, the contours are wider apart. There's like big flats, but you can spend so much time on that map looking for areas to fish and where we are right now we're pretty lucky i haven't seen another person for three days so mapping is giving you the ability or people ability to spread out more and just cover more ground and search areas that maybe they never had the courage or the i'm not sure the word i'm looking for but the 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 willpower to just go out and try new areas mapping will give you that kind of uh, encouragement and uh yeah if you don't have a Lowrance unit, the Angler's Edge mapping is also available on Avenza Maps. It's on an app. I'll put that link or I'll put what the kind of the app looks like, what the app looks like right here. So you also have that option as well. And then there's four, section of clear, four sections of Clearwater, I believe. You can download the whole um, lake itself or you can download individual little areas. But 
it's it's all there and I'd, I'd say that this mapping was a part of us catching a big fish yesterday and seeing big fish right now is because it put us in an area where i had confidence in what to what to look for type of thing this is the first time i've ever fished clear water so if it wasn't for the mapping it wouldn't be as easy but angle's edge mapping has killed it on clear water it's awesome well every hour i come by and just check the tip up, make sure the line's not frozen. So it's been an hour since I last checked. It's about minus 15. Let's see here, pull it up. You can see there's a little skim of ice right here, but not much that, that would easily have got pulled through from a fish, no problem, just like that. So minus 15, these little finicky fooler hole covers with the finicky fooler tip up is a great way to be able to fish rod and a reel like this i love it love it love it love it these are actually sold out right now but they will be available next ice fishing season again so we'll obviously make some announcements when they're available or i'll make some announcements for them i'm not uh, i don't own this company at all i just really liked them after i started to use them but i've done them in lots of my videos so far but finicky fooler and on right here for a rod i got frostbite slugger that's um the the biggest lake trout rod or the biggest rod they have in general this one is a vanta black series the one that adam caught yesterday was was a twilight series 3000 size stratic 30 pound suffix line and then fg knot to 20 pound uh, about a 20 foot fluorocarbon leader two two treble hooks on there on the bottom i have on their uh, vmc barbarians and they are number twos two two size trebles yeah if we catch another fish i'll actually show the rig but if i don't catch another fish or if we don't catch another fish i probably won't show the rig because there's just so much it's not a lot of fish catching in this video it's more of whatever else but that's lake trout fishing highs are high and the lows are low well back at the cabin here at rocky lake resort that's the wrap of our lake trout trip nothing crazy happened today at all we officially got skunked for day three that means we got skunked on day one we caught a nice fish on day two with a couple smaller ones we got skunked on day three we did have a really nice big fish cruising around again today for a long time and i'll show some footage here as i'm talking and then i'll kind of maybe close out the scene here of this video with a little bit more of the fish cruising around again but we yeah, we, uh, it was a, a successful trip in the terms, terms of we caught a big fish. We had other opportunities. They just weren't committing. And that's, that's the way it goes to lake trail fishing. Sometimes you have ups, you have downs. The highs are high and the lows are low. But thank you so much to Rocky Lake Resort for having us. I was going to go home, but it's supposed to be really nice tomorrow. So I thought, you know what, Adam, let's stay for one more day. Tomorrow, we're going to have a one versus one smallmouth bass competition against each other so there will be another video coming from rocky lake resort yet so anyways thank you much thank you very much for watching and don't forget get outside